What's up guys that are just now tuning in? Sorry about that. It's time for Bateman Live like we do every Thursday night at 7 o'clock Central Time. And YouTube guys, what's up? Be sure to hit that thumbs up and like this video and leave a comment. Tonight, we're going to talk about some new products I got in. Uh, I'm adding a lot of stuff on the website. I've been super busy. Uh, heading to iCast early uh monday morning like two o'clock in the morning i'm actually going to be up with mike buka from bullshad swim baits there outside atlanta uh and then going all the way to uh orlando and i will be filming it all the way so look for multiple videos on youtube every single day plus live streams and um what's up cody what's up jesse captain ron david stevens how's it going guys and tonight we're going to do it. We're going to talk about shaky heads. Uh, I catch a lot of fish on this thing. Um, I'll let you know what I know. Uh, a lot of this stuff is going to be available on TackleFreaks.com. Some of it uh, we're slowly adding on there. Uh, really a pain getting all my Zoom up there because we got so much stuff. What's up, Tony? What's up, Scott? So, what's up, Addison? I really appreciate everybody participating in the contest we had. And I believe Cody Britt won, so his package already shipped off today what's going on the big lakes man it is 110 degrees was today it is so freaking high it's hotter than two rats screwing in a wool sock behind a dryer that's the only way i can put it it just take your breath away hot out there and when it gets hot it gets tough and when it gets tough it's time to throw some shaky heads what's up chris what's up mark so in case you don't know as well i'm also putting on a firecracker tournament uh, Saturday night at a Buckhorn ramp, uh, which is the ramp before Moore's. It's from 7 o'clock to 2 at night, and uh, three fish limit. And long story short, the rules are don't weigh short fish, don't weigh a dead fish, and be on the dock at 2 o'clock, and you're good to go. So I encourage everybody to come out there. $40 entry fee. That includes big bass. What's up, Brent? Hey, Kevin Conjure. Hopefully you can find some stuff tonight you can uh, show the habanero bug and rub it in his face. Yeah, we're going to talk finesse worms, shaky heads, a couple tricks, uh, maybe some baits you don't uh, see very often on a shaky head, but I've also got some new products. And do me a favor, guys, hit that thumbs up button and share it to all your friends. I love the Flirt 695, just don't have any in. Night Fishing Show will be available after ICAST. My buddy Craig Hipster is going to join in in a couple weeks. Uh, we're going to talk about night fishing on Kentucky Barkley Lake and night fishing in general. So it's gonna be awesome. Uh, Craig said he would do the show, absolutely. So let's get started with some new products. Um, something that's been out of stock for a while um, is trash fish. If you like the little creeper trash fish, I just got a bunch of six inch in. Uh, something I'm adding tomorrow, this is actually the fat trash fish. Uh, I'll probably have to take this out of the package. I really hate doing this, they're hard to get back in. Um, I don't know if you can tell in the package. It's a it's a lot taller and wider than the normal six inch. Uh, these fat ones are meant for fishing really slow, shallow water. They're a little bit more buoyant. Uh, really a good bait. Uh, like and then the normal size six inch trash fish is fish is on stock on tacklefreaks.com. Something else going up tomorrow. These literally just hit the door. Uh, the All American Sunfish. Uh, a lot of guys have been looking for this bait. It is really really hard to get. Uh, this is your bluegill imitator if you're living on a place in the country where there's still brim on the beds whether they're shallow or up deep this is a swim bait you need to throw rig it up with the beast hook uh, you can hop it up and down this is a this is a killer bait right here and this is colors called brim very natural looking color yeah we got some black spinner baits in uh, speaking of black spinner baits here's a new product I literally just put on the website 10 minutes ago this is from hog farmer bait company and uh, he's a good friend of mine, and he asked me how to make a night spinner bait, and I told him, and this is what we got come up with. This is the epitome night spinner bait by Hog Farmer Bait Company. Uh, we've got a big number six Colorado blade on there. So what's cool about this night spinner bait versus others, if you notice, it's got a hidden head on it. So you flip the skirt upside down, and there's your head. So you can put a swim bait on the back, a skinny dipper, a big grub, uh, whatever your favorite night trailer is you can slide it all the way up there it's got a wire keeper on it and in the wire itself of the spinner bait is actually pretty thin so you're going to get a lot of thump 
a lot of vibration. That one's called the Grape Ape. Uh, this, I, I like a black glue, uh, black and purple at night. So Scott made these. I've already tested it out in the pool and these things run awesome. I know it's going to catch some night spinnerbait um, fish. And when I, I fish at night, man, I really like to target those smallmouth and they like that thumping blade. Um, and then here's another color. Here's the black blue. I can get it out here. This is the three quarter ounce model. It's got a little bit bigger blade. Um, that's the black blue. And he puts that uh, little marabou flash in there. Now, personally, you know, I'm not a big fan of the real long stuff, but you know, you can trim this up how you want to. But uh, again, the shank on the hook, it's just an average shank size. It's got the keeper, but I really like how he put the skirt above the head. Uh, so it lets you have a compact uh, style, uh, but still big bait. Uh, and you don't have to run the weight down the shake of the hook. It's just automatically hidden like so. So that is the hog farmer epitome, not spinnerbait. For you guys that are not fishing, uh, definitely want to try one of these out. Got a red, got a black and chartreuse for the chartreuse blade. Uh, Scott Schwacker down there at Hog Farmer Bait Company. He really does make some of the best stuff. It's all made in the USA. And I'm really proud to be, be a hog farmer dealer. We sell lots of that stuff. Uh, on tacklefreaks.com and speaking of uh had on a couple weeks ago i do have the new hog farmer swim bait head the stand-up swim bait head right here uh just loaded those on the website so this is great for fishing with your swim baits on the ledges uh hopping it down the drops a uh, stop and go when it stops it's going to stand right up on the head got a really good hook on it uh, awesome design on the head that's right there on the website, tacklefreaks.com. Uh, anything else new? Uh, I might have a few things uh, here. Got a new special color from Strike King Lure Company. Uh, this is another one I helped design. Uh, got these in a 2.5 and a 6XD right now. I uh, haven't loaded this on the website. Got to get some photos of it and getting this one out of the package. Uh, you guys that like that old bandit pineapple color, you like the spring crawl little John, let me introduce you to my buddy, Spotted Banana. This is Spotted Banana. This is an exclusive Strike King color. This is the KVD 2.5. This is also going to be available in 6XD. Um, it has gold flake in that, if you can see, in the back as well. That right there is an awesome color. We're going to smash them in the spring. Uh, kind of that blend between a crawfish and a chartreuse black back. Um, appreciate Strike King and uh, Pitman Creek Wholesale for letting uh, me and a buddy design a couple colors. Purple Freak is, is really taking off. It's hard to keep in stock right now, but Spotted Banana will be on the website tomorrow. Yes, sir, Patrick. We just we just started. I'm going to have the, the new nickel shaky head. Uh, Brooks is a good friend of mine, and they make some good stuff. And I'm going to go see him at ICAST and get that take taken care of. And, uh, man, we're going to have a lot of cool stuff after ICAST. I can tell you that. Uh, Strike King's got a Magnum Game Hog. Uh, what else do they have? They got another size Menace Grub. They got uh, the Big Dog. I love the big dog, the Magnum dog, uh, sexy dog. I got to actually have prototype number one, tested it, even had it painted. Uh, it's an awesome bait, and I appreciate Strike King for letting me do that. And I actually tested that thing like two years ago. It came out before the iCast last year, and it, it just made it in the cycle now. So that's about it as far as new products. Uh, I've been really, really busy, and uh, I appreciate everybody uh, tuning in. And again, making uh, orders. Uh, I'm launching my own clothing website probably tonight. Uh, you'll be able to get uh, Bateman apparel. Uh, right now, I've got the new version of the Jenks T-shirt, and it is going. And there's no more waiting for them to print a bunch of T-shirts. When you order, uh, it'll be printed the next day and shipped. Uh, so you'll have your stuff really quick. We'll be able to even make your own performance T-shirt as well. Uh, we'll have tackle freaks. Uh, dot com uh, apparel on there you can choose the colors we've got long sleeves short sleeves tank stops you can get baby outfits if you want to coffee mugs so i'm going to try to do another t-shirt 
every month or so. So if you got ideas, guys, you never know. I may use your idea and uh, I'll send you some baits and we'll work it out like that. So, but let's get talking about uh, finesse worms and shaky heads in general. Uh, as you know, shaky head fishing's really taken off in the last, you know, 10 years. I mean, most of the time guys would laugh at you when, you know, you said they were throwing a shaky head. Now, they want to know how you're fishing it, where you're fishing it, what baits to put on it. It's very popular, super productive way to catch fish. Um, and I'll tell you a short story real quick. I, when I first threw a shaky head, I was fishing a FLW Everstart. Um, and my boater was uh, Sam Newby uh, from down there in Arkansas. Super nice guy, treated me awesome. Well, it was absolutely horrible uh, conditions. And he said, we're gonna go Kentucky Dam Marina and I'm gonna throw a trick worm on a shaky head. And uh, I said, okay. And I had me a spinning rod and some braided line, like 20 pound braid and eight pound leader. Long story short, Sam Newby spanks me. He's throwing a seven foot medium heavy bait caster uh, 12 pound fluorocarbon and he probably gets five bites to my one the problem when i got bit i couldn't get him in the boat he got every fish he hooked in the boat awesome dude finally about midway through the day after about the fifth one i hooked up and lost he said dude i ain't telling you what to do he said but put that dadgum spinning rod down grab my bait bait caster and use it and catch you some fish and first fish the bit and got in the boat and since then i've never thrown a shaky head on a spinning rod now I'm not saying don't do that, but when you live on lakes like Gunnersville, Pickwick, here, uh, other places in the south, especially when there's brush, lots of vegetation, uh, that baitcaster works really, really well. And for the most part, you get the right reel, right setup, you can cast them pretty far. Um, and, and that's always been my theory. I'd rather get the fish in the boat than get a bunch of bites and not get them in the boat. So. Uh, that's kind of what I do now when you go to the magnum shaky heads you know the, the three quarters the halves five eight stuff like that you're really gonna have to use bait caster here just too much of weight there on a spinner rod to be sensitive but that's how I kind of learned fishing a shaky head and uh, I'll show you all the differences now that I've learned more about the heads and hooks and all that stuff and I keep a quite a big arsenal so I'll keep it real simple right here and let's just start out uh, with the most popular shaky head, which is just a round ball shaky head. And this is probably my favorite, second favorite worm uh, to put on there. This is one of the most popular. This is the Zoom Trick Worm. The color's not gonna be too important in this video, but you can see it's a very slender profile. It's It's got a lot of tail, gonna have a lot of action. Very subtle. Um, one of the most popular out there. So let me find my trusty, my favorite, Picasso Shakedown, I like a quarter ounce. You know, I can cover a lot of different water with a quarter ounce. I can fish boat docks, you fish boat ramps, which is a great spot for a shaky head. So if you're ever on Kentucky Barkley Lake and you need a bite, go to a boat ramp. You can catch one on a shaky head there. Or any place, uh, those washouts just hold a lot of fish. So I'm gonna show you very simply how to rig this. Now, not all shaky heads come with a little skirt but this one does uh it's a crazy color i like the bubble gum for a floating worm not so much this right here uh you know those youtube guys they love bubble gum but they're just trying to get views not catch fish so but uh very simple what i'll do like my little trick there on these trick worms i'll buy it a little bit off it ain't gonna hurt you it's a little salty that way i got a place to push this little screw in so this screw is really small on the Picasso, so you kind of have to get it going a little bit. So I, I usually push down in there a little bit so it has something to grab. And it's tough. That's the only downfall I have to uh, this shaky head right here is actually getting it on the screw. But once you get it started, you can see that I did trim my nails this morning. If you can see that just keep screwing keep screwing eventually you're going to get really snug you can see where that hook is and just push it right through and then I kind of hide the hide the point to expose it and that's your basic shaky head that's just a round ball head on a trick worm 
I'm gonna throw this about 75% of the time, uh, that or a Magnum trick worm. I'll show you the difference here, uh, the Magnum. And I'll show you a good hook for these Magnums as well. So here's the Magnum size trick worm, which is super, super popular. And then the normal trick worm. And you can tell uh, the normal one is quite a bit thinner. It's not near as fat as the Magnum. That right there would catch you a lot of fish. Uh, round ball head, so let's talk about that real quick. The benefits of a round ball, comes through wood really well. It's great around boat docks. Uh, the football head may be a little bit better around rock. It's not so good around wood. I really like throwing this around brush piles. And this is a great little setup in brush piles to get real finessey with. Really like this, but football head, great for open water, great for some gravel, some rock, not so good around docks, uh, those cables and brush piles that get hung up. And they also make an arky head, and I'll show you that here in a little bit. Yeah, the DNL shaky heads are really good. I'm actually sold out, Carl, so that's why I don't have them on here. I gotta get some more, but. So there's a trick worm. Now, if you want a little bit smaller profile, still wanna be uh, finesse, uh, you can go with the Zoom finesse worm, which I'll show you in just a second. We're gonna have a mess over here, I can promise you that. So I'm gonna pop this out of here. Now this next shaky head is made by uh, Owner. And this is the Owner Ultra Head. And get one out of the package here. Does a Cinco have action on a shaky head? Yes it does, believe it or not. It sure does. I call that the Dinko rig. Because you're gonna catch a world of dinks with a shake Cinco on a shaky head. So this is the Owner Ultra Head, guys. Really light, it's got a light wire. It is designed for finesse fishing. Uh, you'll notice here, it's got a little centering pin uh, in the skirt, and that helps you uh, put your worm on there. Trent, man, I, I gotta do a swim bait show soon. You're right, so finesse worm, four and a half inches. This is, when you wanna get down to that really light stuff, 3 16 uh, lots of fishing pressure, clear of water. That's when I'll get down to that small one. The good thing about this Owner Ultra Head, it's got that screw. So you center that, or the screw, it's got that pin in the screw. I don't know if y'all can see that. You just push the pin out there in the middle. And it's easy, easy, easy to get this thing started. And you just put your little finesse worm up here. And I like the flat side of the bait facing the hook flat side of the bait facing the hoop. Oh yeah, we're gonna talk about that in just a minute, Eddie. And then, I really like the light wire hook, and that's the owner ultra, uh, ultra head, a uh, shaky head. Now, this isn't a true round ball. It actually has a little bit of, it has a little chin to it, if you know, it's a little flat spot. Uh, this is gonna help this thing uh, stand up a little bit on the bottom, it's gonna help it skip. When I wanna to go to a lot weight, I really like these. I like the lot wire hook. I don't use a lot of EWG hooks myself. It's not saying they don't work, but that is the finesse worm. Uh, this is a, a very simple color. This is watermelon chartreuse. Don't even have to dye the tail. Spotted bass guys, smallmouth guys in the spring, this one will catch you a lot of fish. Let's see what we got next. Someone said, the mag finesse worm. So let me show you a mag finesse worm and then I'm gonna show you guys a football head. Or actually I'm gonna show you an Arky style head and where to use it at. So this is uh, this next bait. This is the uh, ultravide speed worm and the long shank shaky. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, so I don't wanna miss any questions. Yes, I do throw that on a bait caster. I just use a seven foot medium heavy rod. I like a light rod. Uh, you know, right now my shaky head rod, I just sold it. Uh, but uh, Daiwa makes good rods in that. Uh, a Shimano Zodius 7.2 medium heavy is one of my favorite rods uh, for this technique right now. It's very sensitive. That's the key. Lightweight rod needs to be sensitive because uh, you're going to get a lot of bites that you just feel a tick. Um, and you don't want a heavy rod as far as weight. Uh, if you can afford it, go with the Dobbins Champion Extreme, uh, like a 703 uh, Extreme Baitcaster, or maybe a 
Uh, I like the Shimano X-Pride 7.2 medium heavy. That is an awesome shaky head bait if you're going with bait caster and you want to have a really nice reel because you're going to have to be able to cast these without backlashing. That's why I like the uh, Tatula SV, the Zillion SV, the Corrado K, uh, the Metanium, uh, and, all, and especially the Aldebaran is really made uh, for these finesse baits. But This right here is the Dirty Jig Scott uh, Canterbury Head. And if you'll notice, uh, it's really flat. It's almost like an Arky Head. Well, what's great about this is it skips really, really well. You know, somebody said something about a mag finesse worm. And I've got one right here. So here's a Magnum finesse worm. Look at how fat profile this thing is. And then this is the regular finesse worm. So a little bit of extra length on the mag, and it's fatter. These are really popular on lakes that have a lot of boat docks. Uh, the, you know, uh, Table Rock, uh, Lake of the Ozarks, uh, Percy Priest, I send a lot of these mag finesse worms out to. Uh, again, it's going to skip really well with this head because it's not round and it's not a football. It's really flat and it comes through cover really well. Uh, this is a really light one. This is like an eighth ounce. Again, it's got a very stout skirt. And you just push it right up on there. And again, flat side toward the hook. Really meaty bait here. You just make it dead and center. So that is the Magnum Finesse Worm on the Dirty Jig Scott Canterbury Head. And you know, Scott's a big dock skipper and that's why this was designed so you can skip it way back in there. It's gonna come through brush piles and cover really, really easy. I love the Mag Finesse Worm. It's, it's a very underrated bait. Uh, you know, the Mag Trick Worm is amazing. It's awesome. Everybody uh, uses the Mag Trick Worm, it seems. So, that's uh, pretty much all the offerings in Zoom. Uh, if you like that big mag finesse worm or mag trick worm, but you don't want to throw the big weight uh, so much as it's going great, Mark. The big weight, like the half ounce, the three quarters, stuff like that. Uh, I'm going to show you what I like. This is the Nichols Lures uh, shaky head. This is a quarter ounce. But it's got a seven aught hook in it. And guys, also don't forget that Strike King bullworm is awful deadly on a little bitty shaky head. Uh, not the 10 inch, but the 8 inch one. Uh, well, I'm fixing to show you all some more, more stuff. But this is the Nichols Lure 7 aught quarter ounce. And you know, Brooks at Nichols was kind of ahead. Uh, he knew a lot of guys were wanted a little bit bigger hook offering for longer worms. Um, so that is it. And it's a round ball head. I really like throwing this around wood around shallow stumps, places like that. It's not gonna get it hung up very easy. Uh, Red Bug Magnum Trick Worm, man, this thing's popular. Oh, Brent Ayler uh, is the one that turned me on to this color. If you look at some videos of Brent on Kentucky Lake, it's a color he's throwing, but again, you got a big, big spring right here up on the top, and these springs aren't for everybody. Some guys pull them off. And you just, Push that big magnum trick worm up there and see how much bigger that hook is. You can get a whole lot more bait on there. So you're gonna have a really big bite. And now you got that big quarter ounce nickel screwball head on there. Yeah, Chris, I'll definitely show you Cinco here in just a minute. The bigger the worm, the more the head will roll over. That is absolutely the truth. Uh, there are heads designed for big worms specifically. Uh, and I covered that in a previous episode, but this is a this is a good good hook for this size eight inch worm. I recommend this on the bull worm and other things as well. If you want that light weight, the quarter ounce, but you want a bigger hook, uh, that's the Nichols Big Screwball. So I'm going to throw that deep, you know, 18, 20 foot with want that big profile. And then I use like 12 pound line when fishing with the baitcaster fluorocarbon and uh, I believe 12 pound, it lets it get down there deep quicker. Uh, you're gonna get more bites. Uh, the line's lighter. Um, the, only other, the only problem you have with 12 pound, you gotta check your line a lot. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a Sunline guy. Um, Cigar's great. Uh, and if you're gonna go spinning setup, I definitely recommend braid to fluorocarbon. Like 30 pound braided, 
uh, to you know 10 pound fluorocarbon, even 20 pound braid to 8 pound fluorocarbon liter. Uh, I'm not going to tie a knot for you. Uh, if you need to learn a good one, look up the RP knot by Brent Ayler on YouTube. I'll put a link to Brent's RP knot video on here. Um, let's see what else we got. I got stuff falling everywhere, as always. Let's uh, let's talk about a football head. This is the uh, this is the owner football head, and I'm going to pair it up with the Strike King KVD. What weight head do you recommend for an eight inch bullworm? Anywhere from a quarter ounce up to three eighths. Now, if I want to use some guys like that Strike King, um, what the crap is the name? The Strike King Tour Great, the Mag Jig Head, uh, that's great on the bullworm. It was designed for it. It's got a five aught and a seven aught hook. I'm trying to stick with more of my finesse baits right here. If I can get this sucker out of the package, man. When you buy some stuff from owner, they definitely want you to get everything out of there. That's for sure. I'm gonna try to get this out. Yep, owner stuff's good. If somebody has a trick on how to get this stuff out of the package. There we go. There we go. All right, so here is the owner football shaky. So you got your typical uh, football head right here. And I'm gonna pair this up with uh, one of my favorite little finesse worms. It doesn't get talked about a lot. This is the Strike King OPT, which stands for Open Pore Technology Fat Baby Finesse Worm. And that color is Bold Bluegill. And I really like this. Uh, OPT, Open Pore Technology, allows them to get that flat hand pour feel, the softness, and the salt in there. This is a really good little bait, too. And you know, everybody talks about the bull worm. This thing right here at Catch Em. Uh, so again, the owner football head, it's got that little spring right there. Salt on this thing. So they say, I heard it's actually crack cocaine. I'm just kidding, Crispy. So there is your little Strike King OPT fat baby finesse worm on a football head. And so I'm gonna throw the football head around gravel, pea gravel, places where I'm not gonna get hung up around wood. It'll come through rock very well, but if it's around wood, I'm gonna to tend to go to the round ball or Arky style. And you know, I just lay that hook right there. Uh, you can, you know, bury it inside the plastic to expose it, but I like how I can just lay that hook right there on the back and just barely push it in. I get a nice straight worm. Uh, the one cool thing about the OPT stuff, it'll let you know if you're not straight, but that's the owner uh, shaky, and they're priced as well. You get like four in a pack for like five bucks or something like that. Now, I'll show you a bait that I really like putting on a football shaky head real quick. And uh, a lot of guys don't think about this one. Is a sweet beaver. Now, if you watch Tactical Bass and Matt Allen and Tim talk about this, technique right here and uh, my good friend uh, coach Billy Chumbler uh, showed me this several several years ago in Blood River take your little quarter ounce football head and a sweet beaver whatever color you want to use uh, this one's actually called Warmouth got a little green pumpkin chartreuse gold just got this one back in stock that's a great question Brad I am a believer that it does not matter if your worm floats or not on shaky head. I have caught a lot of fish behind guys using a floating tail worm and then vice versa. I really feel like it's where you're throwing it and how fast you're fishing it. So I'll take that little beaver. You see guys how I rigged that? And you can cut this flat. And it's really, these little hooks are the perfect size for a beaver. Just push it right down out in the middle like so. See that hook point? And in there it can expose. And I'll take this little beaver here and I'll pitch it around boat docks, pitch it around cover, pitch it in some brush piles. But it's really good dragging this thing on those 45 degree banks, late summer, early spring, just looking for a couple bites. And as you're dragging it along, look here, there's old defensive crawdad. He's trying to scurry around. 
Smallmouth will absolutely crush this thing right here in the spring. Uh, and that's just on a little quarter ounce football head. And I like to throw it on a football head. That way I can get the stand up action and all that while I'm dragging round ball. Uh, you know, I sit kind of on the bottom like this, but I like the football head on the beaver. Now, somebody said the man bear pig. Man, that's another good one. So I got a few more heads I want to show some guys uh, while we're here. I'm going to put this one back. Uh, I'm going to go through all kinds of stuff. Uh, let's see. Man bear pig. Let's find a shaky head for the man bear pig. So here's the Picasso Shake E football. That's really good. Man, I catch fish on a beaver all year long, Eric. It's so crazy. It, uh... It's one of those baits I always keep in my Bass Mafia money bag because I never know if I'm going to Carolina rig it, shaky head it, use it as a jig trailer. Strike Kink Structure Bug, same way. Uh, you can do the same thing I showed you with that beaver with a structure bug. Uh, but here's that man bear pig. We just got some in stock, by the way. Just a few colors. They've been so popular this year. So this is the Picasso Shaky Football. Unlike the Shakedown, it's got a bigger screw and it's got a flat spot on the bottom of the football. This is a really good one. This is a like a quarter ounce. This is the man bear pig. So man bear pig's very slim profile creature bait. And that color's Okeechobee Craw. And again, just go in the top. Oop, wrong way. In the top with the screw. And the cool thing about the man bear pig, it's got a pretty meaty head. Guys who like to throw brush hogs, stuff like that. There you go. Put your little man bear pig on a shaky head. Go root around with the pig. That's a sweet bait. What I like about the man bear pig, it's very compact, very slender. It's almost a finesse creature bait in itself. It's kind of like the old uh, power hog. And uh, this thing would catch them. But, uh, Mark, I really just kind of. Uh, that's what I got here. Personally, I like a quarter and three eighths. Uh, three sixteenths, I really like in really shallow water. I want to be really, really finessy. A baby man bear pig. We'll have to talk about that. That would be a pretty small bait. I would like to see a magnum bear pig. You know, we we'll call that the you know warthog or something like that. But I, I, quarters, I have probably more quarter ounce in my tackle box than anything. I feel that's pretty versatile. I can fish them out deep. And one thing about a shaky head out deep I like to tell guys is you cannot overwork it I throw it out there I throw a trick worm out there and I would just slowly drag it to the boat and a lot of times my cast compared to someone that's throwing a Texas rig worm lasts two to three times longer but I get two to three times more bites it seems anytime I feel something hard I just let it sit there I don't shake my rod or anything I just slightly drag it same around boat docks I might twitch my rod a little bit after I come through the brush pile, but for the most part, a bite's coming. It's just absolutely dead stick sitting there. So let's get into a couple more baits and heads. Uh, this is a really uh, good one here. This is uh, the new Berkeley Max Scent D Worm. So I do like some small stuff, uh, uh, Johnny. I just don't like to brag about it. Uh, I will get down and throw this stuff. So this is the D worm. So if you can't get them bite anything, sometimes you gotta throw them the D. Throw them the D worm. It's got the Berkeley Max scent on it. And so this is a very small worm, if you notice. This is a true finesse worm. This is the D worm is very slender and round, very tapered. So you can't use a really big uh shaky head on these. So what I like is these right here. This is the Perfection Lure Stand-Up Shaky Head. And if I don't obliterate this package in about 30 seconds, I'll show you what they look like. David Dudley designed these. And these are uh, pretty awesome, actually. If I can get this thing open. This manufacturer is going to have to design some better packaging for the bait man. All right, so if you can't see, this bait has two little prongs on the bottom, and that helps this thing stand up. Uh, see if I can get, there we go. Now I figured it out. You have to be smarter than the packaging, and that, my friends, I have an issue with sometimes. 
I might have to buy these because I've absolutely worked the package. Let's see. Good Lord. I had a problem with line twisting around the prongs. I have heard that. The one thing is if you don't like the prongs, you can just snip them off, but there we go. So there's your little uh, prongs on the bottom. You got a little keeper. But why I like this head is it's great for really small baits, especially this one right here. Now it does not have a screw lock, but there is a mag version of this coming as well. So the ones without a screw lock, you just thread it up on there like your standard Texas rig. Push the head over that little bait keeper and spin it around. and push the hook point back through the bait. Now, a lot of guys are like, man, I don't know about that. My worm ain't real nice and straight. Well, it doesn't really matter uh, because once it's standing up, it's gonna look like that right there. Um, so you're gonna get a lot of action out of the tail. Uh, one thing guys do like about these uh, without the screw, you see where that hook is? That hook is going straight up. So if it's down here and the fish eats it, that hook point is going right in their mouth. Um, so that's the benefit of not using a screw. Now the screws do hold the bait on quite a bit, but that right there is a pretty nice little finesse presentation. The Max Scent does not float, unfortunately, James. It, it sinks just like power bait. Uh, the Max Scent is really, really good stuff. And as somebody asked earlier, I'll be honest, I do not think the flotation really matters that much uh if you've ever dropped a night crawler in the water the night crawler does not stand up on its head and the tail float way up there now it may twist and turn and do some things but for the most part they fall flat on the bottom and they start turning and twisting they don't stand up on their head and do jumping jacks so i've always wondered why guys wanted a floating worm so much when a natural worm doesn't really do that maybe just putting it in a fish's face and I get that. And if you're a guy that loves worms that float, by all means, don't change if that's what's catching you fish. I just do not think floating plastic is a game changer. Now, I do think on an Ed rig that the Finesse TRD, the TRD is exactly, it's the right plastic. For that presentation, I think you gotta go with the Elastec, but the Robo Worm will work. Yeah, super cold water, I can see where the floating works. Woo! Last tech uh, and it, it is great. It's the same stuff as uh, the uh, the Z-Man, Last Tech, Strike King 10X, same stuff. Uh, another great finesse worm, and this one doesn't get talked about a lot. This is uh, the Berkeley Power Bait Shaky Snake, and what I really like about this worm. I like the rib tails. Rib for the fish is pleasure, not yours, just FYI. So keep this for your fish. But it's very, it's got a, it's got a, for an S worm style body until you get to the tail and it's ribbed up. And this one's got that little uh, chartreuse wiggler there. Now I'm gonna put this on a different style head real quick. I'm gonna put this on the old Spot Remover Pro model and guys, Seems this is the forgotten shaky head, but this catches so many fish. And it was really one of the ones that started this held on. I love the show, but I completely disagree with your shaky head thought process. I think it's because you fish Kentucky Lake. Uh, there's a very high possibility, because man, I'm not a, you know, Kentucky, you know, I'm not a shaky head guy. I mean, I prefer to throw big baits, but I have caught plenty of janks on a shaky head and, you know, I'm not gonna change what I do. Uh, but, I'm trying to be versatile here. This is the, uh, the spot remover. The Pro model has a screw, the non, um, the non-Pro, the regular spot remover has a little triangle thing. So, I really like this guy right here. It's gonna stand up really nice. I guess how we can fix this, guys, is we can do some video in the pool. Let's 
So that's how you rig the spot remover. Yeah, mag fat, uh, the Z-Man mag fatty is a great one. So that's the Berkeley Shaky Snake, and I really like this. Very nice profile. Very popular. Sell lots of these. Just put these on Tackle Freaks. But, uh, but that's a great little worm on that Spot Remover Pro model. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, I got to show you guys this if you've never seen this. This is not really a shaky head. Spot remover is a great one. This is the owner uh, finesse ultra head, and I'm going to show you a little trick with this thing real quick. Get these out of the package. So this looks, this right here looks really uh, close to a stupid tube head. But what you can do with this thing, if you guys like throwing net heads and you like an extra wide gap hook. Um, so this is also a finesse, but this is the four and a half inch uh, Robo net head. But you can use this for whatever else. Uh, EWG stupid tube head. Put this down here. See this right here. Oh, got hooked. Got myself hooked. Push that up. Now looky here, looky here. Now we have an EWG style hook on a finesse bait. Now that right there is a really good deal. Now this one is 3 16 an ounce, but you can use this on uh, the small Z-Man TRD uh, because this hook is really small and you get that extra wide gap style on there if that's what you like. This is makes it completely weedless. This is basically a weedless uh shaky head but this right here gets you a lot of bites uh, you can also use that in a stupid tube as well but these hooks are so sharp i just cut myself but that's a very finesse bait right there i'm kind of burnt out if you want to know the truth i'm ready for iCast i feel like i've ran out of topics yeah i like the vma vmc stuff yeah, Mark, I'd appreciate that, man. I've got lots of stuff, but what else have I got here? I wanted to show this for sure. Uh, oh, yeah, the Picasso Rhino Head. We cannot leave that thing out. Um, so I'm going to get show you all the Rhino Head and also the Robo Fat Worms. You know, Joey, I've always been the guy, if I was going to throw a big worm for the most part, I'm going to throw a big worm on a Texas rig. Uh, I feel I don't get it hung up quite as much. However, there's nothing wrong with throwing a big worm on a jig head. I know several guys that do that and do very well. But for the most, really like a big worm on a big Texas rig. Because I fish a lot of brush piles, especially out deep. A lot of stumps. And you just get hung up a lot with a shaky head and that kind of stuff. Uh, but... For those who have never seen, this is probably the most unique uh, shaky head out there. This is the Picasso Lures Rhino shaky head. So this little thing right here, it protects uh, your bait on there. My PB, man, uh, Lake Fork, 10.02. Yeah, I know a lot about Lake Fork tackle. tackle. I know a lot about Lake Fork. Hyper stick is a good shaky head worm. Uh, so this is the rhino head. Um, here's this is the rubble worm fat. So you can tell the rubble worm fat is uh, a lot different than the normal straight tail. Um, it's got a little bit fatter body. So what's cool about this rhino head? And it's not going to have a screw lock. And I'm just chose this rubble worm and spin this thing and you push your bait up in there. And then pull your worm. So, the, the eye tie is way down low right here and this really thing protects your knot, but it's gonna make this bait like stand straight up. 
What brand hook before the Rhino? That was Owner. Uh, it's on the front page of TackleFreaks.com. Um, that's a Rhino head. This one's been really popular. I know a lot of guys that have caught a lot of fish on this thing right here. So that's how that looks. I guess what I need to do is film all this stuff in a pool. Um, I've just been, guys, I've been so busy and I appreciate all the love. Um, I, I don't, I didn't really have a good idea for what I wanted to do with shaky heads. It would be a whole lot better you know, if I had underwater footage and stuff to go with this. Um, but let's see, let's answer a few questions. Thank you, Thomas, no problem. What, um, I try, Richard, I'm trying, I'm trying to venture out in stuff. I don't really, you know, I've caught a ton of fish on shaky head. I've caught some giant fish in tournaments. Uh, Jeff Defue, uh, as my witness, in one tournament, I caught two over six on a shaky head, and it was just a Picasso shakedown and a blue watermelon uh, trick worm. I, I've caught the, my biggest fish on a shaky head have come on Zoom, a blue watermelon trick worm. Um, I've caught several on a mag trick worm and plum, but you know, I think we get too caught up in color, and I wanna talk about that real quick. When you're throwing these finesse baits, any of your green pumpkins, your watermelons, for the most part, you can go to any lake in the country and throw a watermelon candy trick worm and catch fish. In black water, a brackish washer, uh, June bugs, your black blue flakes, that is something uh, a lot of guys throw those trick worms in Florida, June bug, uh, red bug, stuff like that in that brackish water. That, that seems to be the best, but I don't get like, guys that come in, do you have green pumpkin candy, red swirl, orange tail? Uh, how about a green pumpkin candy? That'd be fine. Uh, but now Tennessee River, it's a different animal here. You pretty much in the summer, if it's some variation of plum, red shad, or tequila sunrise, that's what I always recommend. You cannot go wrong with green pumpkin. I do tell guys, keep it simple. These are really simplistic baits. A shaky head is not a collaboration of wires and blades and, and hook size. It's a very simple bait and made to catch very simple fish. And that doesn't mean small fish, that means fish that they don't wanna be real active. They just wanna be in one spot and be left alone. And that shaky head comes through there and gives them a very simple meal. And I think that's why they bite it so often. It's not something that's going by really, really fast or anything, it's just, it's going slow, easy meal. So that'd be my biggest tip. Uh, when you get on uh, Tackle Freaks or your local tackle store and you're trying to figure out colors, as long as it's green pumpkin or watermelon, you can catch a fish on any lake in the country. If you want to catch some smallmouth, uh, maybe go to a smoke purple, stuff like that. Smallmouth like those smoke colors. Uh, if you're on the Tennessee River, plum, I don't care, plum, crazy apple, plum, purple, plum, plum butt, as long as it's plum. I like a bait caster for shaky heads that does not mean don't use a, a spinning rig. Larry Ellis likes a 10 inch power worm tequila sunrise. Larry, they're gonna pull your Strike King sponsorship for saying that, buddy. But that is a good worm. I don't ever throw a, a ribbon tail on a shaky head. Maybe I should try. I do agree with that, Joey. That clear water, smoke purple, a watermelon gold. Uh, up north, you'll sell a lot. When you're fishing up north, those clear, flashy colors uh, seem to do really, really well. Um, I'm trying to think of a good color, a Mardi Gras, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so I've got iCast next week, lots of live videos. Um, another thing I forgot to let you guys know 1.5 DDs, the number one selling bait this year on tacklefreaks.com. And yeah, it's only been out for like three weeks. It's their number one seller. I, I can promise you, I've sold almost a thousand babe swim baits. So that should tell you how many of these I've sold three weeks. You better get them, everybody's buying them. Uh, Morgan, we do have some left-handed lose. Not very many. But uh, I hate to really cut the show short. And I'll be honest with you guys, shake your head's not my strong subject. I throw it a lot, but I'm I'll be honest with you, I throw what works. What works for me is that Picasso shakedown ball head on a mag trick worm or a regular trick worm. Uh, I'll, I'll throw that beaver on a shaky head quite a bit. I try to show you some guys some stuff that I know works that I've had guys tell me. Guys like 
Tim Little, Matt Allen that I trust with the shaky head. If you have never caught their videos, you might not know about. But find something that you're comfortable with that you catch fish. I'll just show you all the options out there. It's up to you to try the different ones and figure out what works best uh, for you. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It doesn't matter what I tell you or what anybody else. Um, but there are times that it's worth doing some experimenting. So anyways, guys, I'm going to jump off here. I really need to be with my family before I leave for a whole week. So hopefully we'll have a couple iCast shows. When I get back from iCast, Craig Hipshire on here. We'll talk about night fishing. And then we may hit swim baits up. We'll start getting some guests on here. This show is going to change just to let you guys know. It's not going to be me by myself on here very much anymore. It's going to start broadcasting 1080 PHD. Uh, we're going to run commercials, possibly. Uh, Bateman Show is looking for some sponsorship, just FYI. You know, if you're with a company like Strike King or Daiwa, TH Marine, Coast of Sunglasses, hop on board the Bateman Show, be a sponsor. Let's help out some of these fans and get some product in their hands. Um, it's not about me, it's about fishing, guys. Uh, you know, I don't want to be sponsored, but the show, uh, it costs me my time and i'd like to uh see who wants to hop on the Bateman train we get more viewers than ike live and i could show you the analytics it's awesome but uh again youtube guys thank you so much for subscribing we're almost we, we gained 200 subs last night so i'm up to like 6200 subs we're going to be at that 10,000 mark pretty soon and i appreciate each and one of you uh randy flowers i love randy i do not know who he is but uh, he let me know that we're going to have a Randy Flowers t-shirt. It's going to be called the Stroke One. So, guys, I appreciate you joining in. Uh, don't forget to pick up some more Strike Force. It's now back in stock. And I will see you guys live from iCast. And I'll go live on the Tackle Freaks page and the Bateman page. So, make sure you join both. And, uh, guys, uh, God bless you. Have a good night.